Have you ever asked yourself what type of people that Allah loves? You know, I'm sure that Allah does not, you know, hate anyone, but it depends on our deeds. I'm also sure and certain there are certain people whom Allah loves. Now, you don't have to wonder anymore because one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ had exactly the same question that you may ask or you may have right now. This companion, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, tell me the type of people whom Allah will love them or Allah loves them. Now, again, if you reflect on our daily life, you know, you may consider that question not that relevant or that significant. But if you're a righteous person and you want to be close to God or close to Allah, you want to be near your Creator, you want Him to love you, these are the type of questions, type of questions that you should be asking. So this man, this companion of the Prophet comes to the Messenger of Allah and he says to him, O oh Prophet of Allah, tell me the type of people whom Allah loves. Now keep in mind, when he said, type of people, types of people, he did not mean, you know, tall or short, you know, white or narrow or fat or skinny, you know, black or white or brown. He means or he meant type of people spiritually who are closer to God and God loves them. So the Prophet wasallam said to him, the people that Allah loves them most are those who are good to others. Mm. See, you never thought of that. You thought the Prophet may say, well, the people that God loves are those who are wealthy or those who have degrees, your PhDs on the wall, you know, doing certain things. Those who are strong physically and mentally. Those, you know, you can run fast, who can read fast, who can, you know, do certain things. But God has a different measurement in terms of measuring what He likes and what He loves and what He dislikes. Now here, the Prophet ﷺ said, in, in Arabic, I will say so you can understand, he said, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ لِلنَّاسِ He said, the people whom Allah loves most are those who will benefit others most. Wow. Now again, he did not say God loves Muslims alone, or believers or mu'mineen alone all those who will benefit the believers, who will benefit the Muslims. But he said, God loves those who will benefit others. Now, number one, we rule out one thing, and that is, if you are out there to hurt others, to harm others, then God would not love you. Because he says, the Prophet of Allah said, God loves those who would benefit others. So what kind of benefit are we talking about? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned general benefits. It can be anything. It could be that you go out of your house, knowing your neighbor is an elderly person, he or she is struggling, you know, shoveling this snow, and you go out of your house, you get out of your comfort, and you say to this elderly person, this, you know, your neighbor say, you know what, relax, I'll remove this snow for you out of the driveway today. Or you will say, you know, it's summertime, let me cut the grass for you. Let me do it for you. See, those acts are the acts that God will love you for because you are going to benefit someone else you you know you're young you're fit you're strong you're fast you know you can do a lot of things you see this old lady pushing a you know shopping cart and she's trying to unload things into her car and you come around and you stop and say good evening ma'am or good evening sir in a nice and beautiful manner and you help that person out and you take that card and you put where it belongs and you say, thank you very much for allowing me to serve you, for allowing me to help you, for allowing me to be your aid and to be there for you. Now when you do this, God will love you. Allah will love you. When you go and you feed a needy person, God will love you. Allah will love you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet wasallam said, people whom Allah loves are those who will benefit the people most. Now I want to ask you a question. When was the last time that you really helped someone? You know, nowadays we live in a society. We live in a lifestyle that you only worry about yourself. If you're generous enough, you may, continue, you may, continue, you may you know, include a few. If you're generous enough, you may include a few members into your little circle. You may include your parents. You may include your children. You may include some close friends. You may go out of your way for certain people, but not for the general masses. Now, again, if you ask yourself, how many people did you help today? How many times have you went out of your way to help others? You know, in this society, 
you know, it's difficult to find someone who out of the kindness of their heart will find this lady with her children with a flat tire, then stop the car, get out of the vehicle, go help her out, and then continue on your journey. You will not find those people. You see some of the footage that you see on YouTube and Facebook and you know, a social media that you may see someone struggling on the side of the road and people will pass by that person as though he does not or she does not exist. You watch on the news children who do not have what to eat, children who do not have what to drink, children dying with the, for the minimum medical or medication, yet we don't care. You will watch children suffering out of hunger and you will sit in front of that, you know, full of cheese or vegetarian pizza and you will be taking bite while you're watching children almost dying out of starvation. See, God taught us in Islam that if you want me to love you, you got to love others. You know, a lot of people, they think if I'm good, you know, if I don't do bad things, you know, if I'm only, you know, be a good citizen, then this is wonderful and God will love me. Yes, yes, God will love you, but God will also love someone else more than you because that person is willing to go extra mile and help others. And as Muslims, we were taught from the get-go, from the first day, Muslim care, Muslim share. As children, our mothers, they sing these songs, they, you know, they keep repeating, you know, for us, so we can learn this, it can be part of our existence, and they keep repeating to us, Muslim care, Muslim share, you know, share with everything, share with resources that are available for you, share the time that you have that is extra than the time that you need for yourself. And that's what is so important. As Muslims, we need to do that. And if any non-Muslim is watching, then you must understand that for us to help anyone, whether he's Muslim, not Muslim, believer, not believer, it doesn't matter. As long as we're helping a human being, or as long as we're helping, you know, living being, we are in a good state. For example, just to illustrate, just to show, just to show you, the Prophet told us, our Prophet sallallahu told us, that was this lady, and this lady, she used to be not so decent in her living and the way she used to earn her own living and the society would label that person as not a decent person and of course God was not pleased her action and deeds and then one day while she was walking by a well she went down and she went to the well and she got she got some water for herself and then when she climbed up and she had enough for herself and she drank and she came up she realized there's a dog who cannot do what she did. That dog cannot do it for itself. So, and the dog was thirsty so much so, so much so that she felt sorry for the dog. And then she took the time and she went down to the well once again and she fetched some water and she gave it to the dog. And then the prophet said, God was watching her doing that. And then God forgave all her sins and made her from the people of paradise. Now, in Islam, when we help people, we are rewarded. When we help animals, we are rewarded. And that's why in Islam, there's nothing called hunting for sports. You can't just go out and hunt or fish for sports. You cannot do that because those living beings, they have, living beings, they have rights over us. We better and we must respect that. And this is the teaching, the beauty of Islam. Not only that, Islam is ordering us to help the environment and that's why you're not allowed to pollute water you're not allowed to cut trees unnecessary you're not allowed as a matter of fact to, to cut grass unless you have to you're not allowed to kill any living being including mosquitoes and little things like that unless there's a direct harm to you and when we do this and we benefit others whether they're human or animals or insects then God will love us and I'm inviting all the people who are watching this that listen, stop being selfish, stop being self self centered person, stop worrying about yourself alone, and live for others. Because when you live for others, God will take care of you. And this is the formula that a lot of people misunderstood. God taught us in according to the teaching of the prophet that if you are so much engaged helping others, 
so much concern about the well-being of others, then God will take care of your affairs.